Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And today we was the day when Glum Hippo's fossil hunt came to an end. Well, it's the deadline for trying to win the plushy hippo, at least. And we're so grateful to Philip for creating the hunt, for buying the prize. He will be sending it to someone whose name we will draw tomorrow and announce soon on the channel. Um, many congratulations to all of those hundreds and hundreds of you who got uh, correct answers in. And Simon is manfully working his way through the people who got their answers in by the 15th, at least. Um, and uh, the number that have achieved it over the last five days probably shows he was wise to have a cutoff for that, just in terms of maintaining his sanity and being able to get through all the names. But that's brilliant. Uh, we're grateful. This is possibly my last chance to say thank you very much to Philip for creating that brilliant hunt. And next month we will be bringing you on the 1st of March, uh, Alice in Sudoku Land. And I can guarantee you'll enjoy that as well. It really is good. Do think of joining us on Patreon in time to have a go at the beginning of the month at that. Uh, always other stuff on Patreon as well later in the week there will be my attempt at the Times Monthly Club Special Cryptic Crossword, which is an absolute beast. No surprises there. Um, and there's always other stuff going on on Patreon. Also, in the links under the video, you can check out our apps and our merchandise and uh, all the other things around the channel. But the first link is to this puzzle called Silent Killer by Luda3, whose debut it is on the channel, and we welcome them very much. Um, they sent us this puzzle. They credit uh, Doomdiat with having explained, or, or not explained, but introduced them to the modified little killer rule that applies here. Now, I don't think I've seen it before, but it does explain how we can have a little killer of zero in the corner. Um, so which is not something you could normally see. So let me go through the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're going to be putting one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box in the grid. Normal enough. Digits in neighboring cells along a green line must differ by at least five. So in those two cells, you could have four nine, because the difference is five. You could have a one and a nine, because the difference is more than five. But do not try and put a three and seven in there. It's not allowed. That's the German whisper rule. Digits, now we've got some Kropke rules, but not very many dots. Digits joined by a white dot must be consecutive. Digits joined by a black dot must have a ratio of 1 to 2. Now, here comes the modified little killer rule. So the numbers outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal while omitting the nth digit from the sum where n is the digit in the first cell along the indicated diagonal. So if that was a five, you would add up all of these yellow cells along the diagonal except the fifth one. So you'd be adding up those and getting 31. Um, that's the rule. I've not seen it before. It's a bit unusual. It's like a sort of back negative x sums rule of some sort, I suppose. But uh, anyway, that's what it is. And um, there is a little note that n cannot be larger than the length of the diagonal, so you couldn't put an 8 oops, an eight in there because the diagonal is an 8, so it wouldn't be referencing a digit to omit from the sum. So those are the rules. Give it a try on the link under the video. Um, I am going to start now. I'm going to restart my clock. Let's get cracking. Um, yeah, this naught diagonal, we must... Well, OK, that last bit of the rule tells us instantly that the answer here is 1 because n, which is the first cell being pointed at in that direction, can't be larger than the length of the diagonal. The length of this diagonal is 1, so that is a 1. And that's going to tell us along the German whisper. Now, two secrets of German whisper lines. One is they don't have 5 on them because there's no digit that 5 can be next to. And the second is that, therefore, each number alternately is higher or lower than 5. So I like to colour the polarity, if I can, with lower than 5 is 1 and higher than... Sorry. <laughs> lower than 5 is blue. <laughs> 1 in that case. Um, higher than 5 is orange. And that can often help us fill the grid with 
cells of those colors or polarities. Ah, so this 17 diagonal, this is pretty clear actually. If that is not allowed to be bigger than the length of the diagonal, well it's now 2, 3 or 4. That is low, so the alternating cells are low and the other ones are high. And now we've got all the four low digits marked in box 1. One of these two is a 5, not appearing on a green line. Oh, we have an analogous situation down here, don't we? Because there's a lot of symmetry going on here in terms of the lines, the black dots, where the whispers are, I think. Ah, but not here, actually. This 2 is not pointing at this, and indeed it couldn't make any sense. If you are pointing at a one-cell diagonal, your clue is going to have to be 0. Um, and indeed the number on the diagonal would have to be 1. But, right, the same thing applies up here. This has got to be a low digit. The diagonal length is only 1 or 2, so that's low. Then we colour the alternating digits on the diagonal. Actually, I'll get back to that. This has to be low for exactly the same reason that was. The diagonal's length is no more than 4, so that's a low digit. And again they alternate. And now all the high digits have been placed. So that's either ah, that's either low or five, but it can't be low because it's consecutive to a high digit. Now the nearest you can get to a low digit with a high is six and four the other way, and they're not consecutive. So that is not low. That's low, and therefore this is 5, and the high digit here is a 6. Okay, that's great. That's giving us 1s here, and now I didn't even have to do the work of deciding whether this was a 1 or a 2. I've found out, because we've got a 1 in the box. So that's, that's interesting, actually. My, the brief thoughts that flitted through my brain for this diagonal were that it could be a 1 here, but then it would need to be a 2 here, and that seemed quite likely. But that's not what's happening. It's a 2 here. Oh, I see, which means we're not counting this cell. We've only counted that. So we've answered the clue. This can be, what, theoretically anything from the little killer clue. But because it's a blue cell, it's 3 or 4. And it can't be 4. Now, here's another interesting wrinkle of German whisper lines. Uh, the... You can't put a 4 or a 6 on them in a position where the two neighbours of that number see each other. And that's because if you did put a 4 here, both of its neighbours, there's only one Sudoku digit that can neighbour a 4 on a German whisper line. It's a 9, and both of its neighbours would have to be 9, and that obviously breaks at least two Sudoku rules. So that's a 3, and that's surrounded by 8 and 9, given the German whisper rule. So that's 4. This is 7. Oh, we can do this sum... Um, we're not counting the first cell, so to get to 13 we add 6 and 1 is 7, and that one is another 6. And thank you, bottom right corner, we've answered most of your questions. I don't think we can resolve those two yet. Let's see if we can do more up here. Yes, okay, these three cells can't be 6. Because although those two are next to a 1, they're also next to something else that's not a 1. So these are a 7, 8, 9 triple. This is now a 5, 6 pair. And I should probably know from this clue what's going on on this line. Now, if that was a 3, we wouldn't be counting that cell. So we'd be adding 3 plus a number here plus a number here to get to 17. And that would work. 377 or 386 would do it. Ah, this can't be a 6, because that also is next to a 2, 3, or 4, not a 1. But it can be a 3. 3, 7, something not counted, 7. When that's something not counted, would actually have to be a 2. Now, can this be a 2? If this was a 2, we're not adding that. Would 2 plus 4, even at a maximum, doesn't give you enough to get up to 17. That can't be a 2. Can it be a 4? Probably not. 4 plus... 
Oh, oh. Okay, I was about to say it can't be a four either, but I had just realised that's dangerous. It could be a four. You wouldn't be counting this cell. And I was thinking that two lows and a high isn't enough to get to 17. But if they were both four, it is enough to get to 17. That would be a nine, which it would have to be by the whisper rule anyway. So actually, this can still be three or four. That's very interesting and unexpected. This clue is too long to provide any information yet. So... So what about this line? This one doesn't look that helpful. Those can't, mm, I don't know, those can't have a one in and they must have a low digit. But the same is true for these two. Ah, oh, this is interesting. This cell is interesting because it sees a one and a two. So if this is low, it's a three or a four. But it can't be a 4 because its neighbours see each other. They would both have to be 9s. Oh, and it can't be a 3. Look, that's even better because this neighbour here would have to be 8 or 9. And we've got a pair in the bottom row of 8 9s already. So that is not 8 or 9. And that's not 3. And now we know it's high. And now we get the alternation along this line. Oh, I've only just noticed these two... They're begging to be low because they're on black dots. There are only two high numbers that can be on black dots. And these, because they're in alternating positions, they must both be high or both be low. If they were high, that would be a 6-8 pair. That would be a 3-4 pair. That would have to be a 1. And this is all so possible that I'm now beginning to think that might be right. So, bother. Wrong place to look. Um, this is a good place to look because it's low and it can't be one or three. And it can't be four for exactly the same reason that couldn't be four. If this was four, those would both be nine, which would break the rule about digits in a box. So that's two. This one is not one or four, and now it's not two. So that's three. This is now eight or nine. Can't be seven anymore. And this is, ah, it's high enough to be five away from two, but it's not eight or nine, so that is seven. That's not seven. Oh, this isn't, oh, it could be seven. That would be a two. In fact, one of these in this column is a seven. So one of these two, which are the cells next to them on the German whispers, is a two. Do you see, if that's not a seven, and this is a part of a seven, eight, nine triple, one of these two is a seven. If that's a seven, that has to be two. If that's a seven, that has to be two. So now two's in one of those cells and not here. And now I've got, ah, I've got a three, four pair and a one in the top row, but I'm going to need a low digit in that pair. And that low digit will be a two, but I don't know which cell it's in. Uh, two can go with seven, eight, or nine, but one of them is a two. Here, I can't have seven or six. I get one high digit, and it's whichever of eight or nine is not there. That doesn't really tell me about the low digit. Still can't use the 31 clue. Ah, uh, can you use something about the 31 clue? It tells me that this N in this cell is not eight or nine because that diagonal is neither eight nor nine cells long, it's seven. So this is either a two, and we don't count that cell. Actually, I'm gonna color these, just so I know where that diagonal is in case something pops up along it. Um, we're either counting all of those cells if the diagonal starts with a two, or we're counting those ones if it starts with a seven, but I haven't got any information on the numbers there, so we will come back to that. Uh, okay, let's just do some Sudoku pencil marking. Four, five, six, still to place in the bottom row. That can't be a three. Oh, this can't be a two. I hadn't noticed that by Sudoku. Often it's the bottom row that I just don't see all the way down to. So this is a two. We've got a three, four pair. That's the two. And that identifies which of these two is seven. This now can't be. So that is seven. That's not... One of those is four, that's not, hmm, is it interesting? 
Yeah, I'll tell you why it's interesting. These two are the same number. Because whatever that is, that isn't. Uh, or rather, looking at this cell, whatever this is, that's different from, from it twice. So those are the same. So 4949 is still possible, which would add up 49 and 4. 3? Yeah, 3 doesn't work anymore because the minimum for these two is a pair of 8s. And if that was a 3, we'd be adding up to 19. So this is now the 4, and it does go 4949 with a 3 here and an 8 there. And that's not an 8 now. This is either a 2, 7 pair or 2 there and 9 there. Now, this cell can't be 7, 9 or 6, or indeed 2. It can't be 4 because that would have two of the same neighbours in the same box. It's 1, 3 or 8. That's not actually that helpful. Ah, that 9 is looking down at this cell. That's become an 8. This works fine, this whisper. Right, what about this? Oh, that's quite interesting. It, the cell, the digits it can't be by Sudoku are 2, 3, 7, 8, 6, 5, and 4. So that is an extreme digit of 1 or 9. This is 2, 6, or 8. Come on, one of these might give me something. This is not any of the odd digits for some reason. It's 2, 4, 6, or 8. Uh, that's not really that useful. Polarity is interesting on German whisper lines. Parity much less so. Oh, by Sudoku that is 5 or 9. It sees those digits in its row and those in its column. Um, oh, that can't be a 2. There's one. Oh, it can't be 2 or 8. Hang on, this one, this one is naked. It, sorry, it sees 3, 4, 1, 7 in its row. 9 in its column, it sees 2 and 8 in its box, and it can't be a 5 because it's on a green line. So that is a 6, which is a very helpful number. That gives us 1s there. Let's do the colouring. Orange for the higher digits. Uh, these turned out to be blue, which I suppose was what I was expecting originally. This is low, so it's not 6 or 8. This is... oh, this is a 2 on the black dot, not a grey. That is 3 or 4 now, and this is 6 or 8. 3 or 4, its neighbours can only be 8 or 9. Um, and I can't resolve those. Now, in the top row, these are from 5, 6, 7 and 9. Is this known to me? Can't be 2, 4, 7, 6. Can't be 5 because of the whisper. 1, 3, 8, or 9. I don't know. Maybe there's a way I should know what that is. Let's look at this box. That's not 6. 5, 4, and 9 to place. Uh, ah, the, oh, look. The 6 looks up here. So we get 5 and 6. Oh, I thought that 5 was going to come down and fix this, and it doesn't. These are from 4, 5, 6, just like along the bottom. Ah, the 9 in this column, I can place that and that finishes off the box. Oh, that's quite helpful. This might get us going now properly. 8, 6, 4, 9, 1, 2. That's a 3, 5, 7 triple. That's a naked 8. We get a 1, 2 pair here. So that 6 is actually looking all the way across the grid. Um, 379 down here, 258 above, that one can't be a 2. None of it's really attacking these cells. Ah, look, ordinary Sudoku on 4s. Where does 4 go in row 2? One of those three cells but not that by the whisper, and not that because of the four below. So we get a four on the line, which again is helpful. It gives us a nine. That fixes the eight, nine pair at the bottom. We get five in the corner. We didn't get any songs in the corner today. That's not a nine, so the, e the high digit here is an eight. 
The low digit here is a two. How do I use that? I don't know. Um, yes, I do know. Where does six go in this box? Only one place. It's there. Nine there says that's not a nine. This is now a two seven pair. So this is a six nine pair. That's nice. That gives us a six eight nine triple, which is going to sort some numbers down below. Five, four, and not nine. Right. That's good. Now, two, seven. How do I not know which way round they go? And eight is definitely here. So that is one or three. You may notice I've stopped marking high and low cells. I mean, I think it's done its job for me on the line. So it just doesn't appeal anymore, I'm afraid. That is seven or nine by Sudoku. I don't want to have to get in a position of just pencil marking all the candidates in every cell, but, well, you know me, it sometimes happens. Um, now, that's 689 triple, 254. These are from 137. Ah, that's 1 or 3. Now, that's a good cell to pencil mark because it gives me a 1, 3 pair in the row, and that makes this 8, and that tells me about high and low on that line. So that's a 7 at the end. That's a 2. Oh, the 7 is going to tell me about the 31 thing. So we're not adding that cell, the 7th cell. We're adding the yellow cells to get 31. OK, I am going to mark these now. 9, 1, 2, 6, 4. That's 3, 5, 7 or 8. 7, 6, 9, 4, 8, 1. That's 2, 3 or 5. So there's quite limited options. Let's look at the maximum. 7, 12... 19, 27, 29, 36. So five less than the maximum. Oh, we've got that one three pair. So we've got a two five pair in the row. I don't think I can disambiguate those. Um, it hasn't really helped on the Maybe it's still too early to attack the diagonal. That is 3 or 5 by Sudoku. This is part of a 7, 8, 9 triple. There. These are from 1, 3 and 4 and definitely include a 4. Um, 7, 9, 4, 6, 8. Well, I am now pencil marking things. Just because I think I'm missing something, actually. Maybe the pencil marking will help me find it. One, one. is something like this with regular Sudoku. Oh, six. Yes, look at that. Where does six go in row four? There is only one place, and it's there on the black dot. So that becomes a three. That doesn't resolve this. But I think we'll get that now, because we get nine, six solved up there. This becomes eight. Yes. That's not 8. 8 is placed in that triple. That can't be 3. None of those can be 3. Um, haven't really sorted out much on the yellow diagonal. I don't think. That can't be 3. 6, 8, 2, 1, 3. Oh, 4 in the central box can only go there. I think that finishes off all fours in the puzzle. Six. That's one, two, or five. Okay, I'm missing something in this row. Yes, that can't be eight now. So that's a five, seven pair. So that's one or two. Seven, nine, four, six, eight. I don't know quite how this finishes off. Right, let's go through the maxima again here. I don't think they've changed actually. Oh, they have a bit. I took an 8 out. 7, 12, 19, 26, 28, 35. So I can reduce... Well, I have to reduce some of these from the maximum digit by 4. So that can't become a 1. That's reducing by 6. That's too much. Ah, OK. Here's a little thought. One of those, at least, maybe both, is going to have to stay at 7. Because if I reduce that, I'd take 4 off my maximum. And if I reduce that, that's another 2. I'm only taking 4 off this 
the maxima in these cells. So one of those is a 7, and that's not a 7, because it sees both of them. It's 3 or 8. It doesn't actually do anything, does it? I bet it's 8. Um, now this central box has been achieving stuff while I haven't really been paying attention to it. Well, maybe not. Oh, that's 7 or 8. Ah! Oh, that's really weird. Yes, since this became not a 1, there's only one place for 1 in box 2, and it's there. So that's a 3. That gets us 1 here, 3 here, 5 here. Come on, keep doing stuff. 1, 2, pair. All right, 1, 2. That can't be 5. Wow. These are the only two cells on the diagonal that can change parity as they reduce. Oh, I see it. So either those two cells do change and we'll, from the maximum, and we'll get a 2 and a 1, and 7s in all the other cells, or, or one of these reduces by 4. And it can't be this one. If this reduced by 2... There's no other place to get a reduction by 2 from the maximum. So this doesn't reduce. That's a 7. Um, and now I can finish the middle box. That might finish the puzzle. That's so weird. We get a 5 there. This 9 has sorted out 7 and 9. That sorts out 3, which is where all the reduction happens on this um, diagonal. So everything else is maximum now. 2, 7, Five. Let me just add this up. 7, 12, 19, 26, 28, 31. Correct. And I think that must finish everything off now. 2, that's an 8. That's a 3. That's an 8. That's a 2. And a triple left to do, which we must be able to. 9, 3, 7. That's a very nice puzzle. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good fun. Um, sorry about all the colouring. Let's get rid of that now. And, uh, yeah, most entertaining. Thank you, Luda3. Um, that's a good use of the rule. It's not too hard. There's, there's always a way forward in that puzzle. You just have to keep scanning your options, uh, knowing what's likely to happen along German whisper lines once you get a bit of traction on those. Um, I have to admit, I've got a lot of experience now with German whisper lines, so that's useful. Um, I hope you had a go at that, and hope you did it in a sparkling time uh, whatever that is for your own ambitions. And thank you for watching. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Oh, we're streaming now, aren't we? I hope you've come to this after watching the live stream. I couldn't trail it because it, this video is released after the live stream starts. Anyway, see, see you at some point. Bye for now.